live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Welcome to the broadcast, everyone, and we've got a big development, and that development focuses on the issue of ISIS. Why is it significant? For eight years, President Obama's administration called ISIS the Islamic State and Syrian Levant, ISIL. That was a huge mistake. That was defining your enemy by their aspirations. The Department of Defense last week has issued a statement, and this is very important, folks, clarifying permanently that the Department of Defense will no longer use the designation ISIL. The Levant, by the way, includes, I'm going to put this up on the screen. I want everybody to see this. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about an area of the Middle East that includes Israel. This is an interesting piece from Daily Caller. CNN has noted in the past that the Obama administration used ISIL to communicate that the group was interested in expanding beyond Syria and Iraq. I've been saying for three years, why are we defining the enemy by their aspirations? So now the administration says we're not going to do that anymore. The State Department says we're not going to do that anymore. It's ISIS. That's who they are. You can define your enemy by who they are. You don't define them by their world conquest desires. We're going to you call them the caliphate? I mean, no, we're not going to do that. Here's what I said. you got to stop using the term ISIL. That, to me, is defining your enemy by their aspirations. And that is always a mistake. So when was that, Will? When did I say that? That was... Uh, December of 2015. So this has been something that's bugged me since, not just because we had the rise of ISIS, which was our book that talked about the enemy as they were, but this was the administration's attempt to justify, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, I'll, well, I'll go to Jordan first, I'm going to ask our military guys too. Why would you define your enemy this way? Why would they have used the term ISIL? Because it was about themselves first. So uh. I, I, don't, I think it was the, the aspirational idea that they, that they were, this is bureaucratic to speak, especially more, less from the State Department, more from the State Department. If we're going to officially name them, we should name them exactly how it's, they really are. And they want to create a worldwide caliphate, and they're moving into the Levant. Set, but I think more important, the Obama administration said, that's great, because then we don't have to keep saying Syria over and over again, reminding the American people that President Obama drew a red line in the sand in Syria and let the, uh, Omar, uh, the, Basa, the Assad uh, regime, regime walk right over the red line, use chemical weapons on its own people, and the United States did nothing as we were defining the enemy by the wrong term because they were fine with it because yeah. we were miss we were taking the people's attention yeah. away from Syria. Wes, go ahead. Yeah, I think one of the things that the previous administration did uh, in my studies at Regent on yep. counterterrorism, they say there are three basic aspects to, to the terror threat. You have people who are actively involved in ISIS, people who blow things up and shoot people and behead people. You have people who provide them material and financial support. But you also have a large group of people who have sympathies with certain aspects of what they're trying to do. And I think what President Obama attempted to do was to be deferential to that third group. But you, it came across as being deferential to our enemy. And you yep. don't ever want to be deferential to someone who's trying to kill you. That's exactly right. Let me play the sound from President, uh, I think it was, I think he was already elected, but maybe not, maybe, no, no, this goes back. Yeah, this is while he was campaigning. This became an issue for the president. Take a listen. You talked earlier about how the, about the notion that we're losing to ISIL, that they're making us look foolish and soft. ISIS. ISIS, 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 ISIL. You know, it's one thing with the president. He always says ISIL. Whatever. ISIL, ISIL, ISIL. Everyone else says ISIS. And it's almost like he does it to bother people, okay? Uh, well, you I'm not, understand. I'm not doing it to bother you. I, okay. No, I know that. I, but, but you know what? But the president of the United States always says ISIL. But, and everyone else says ISIS. And I actually think he does it to bother people. But, it's exactly what I said earlier. It's it, it made everybody feel uncomfortable. It was anytime President Obama started talking about anything Islamic, he started sounding a bit too much like an imam, which is why the conspiracy theory started. Some of that's because he went to a madrasa. I mean, he was he did go to some of his schoolwork and time in and in, uh, in Indonesia. He spent time there, so he grew up in that community. I'm not calling him a Muslim, by the way, folks, but he had uh, some of the language down. And so he, again, when he used that, it made everybody uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. I didn't like it. I didn't like that he was forcing our other uh, government agencies yep. to uh, use it. And uh, and I'm glad today that that has ended, and I'm sure those bureaucrats are very upset about it. Yep, and that's going to create more problems, let me tell you, for that shadow government. 
folks, the issue is very clear. We need to destroy and defeat ISIS once and for all. We need to be praying for our military, but we need direct action here. We've got a petition urging the president, urging Congress, the Secretary of Defense, let's engage this enemy and defeat them. ACLJ.org to sign that petition. That's ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. 877-989-2255 or ACLJ.org. The Islamic State is beheading, crucifying, and slaughtering Christians. ISIS is threatening to terrorize America. It's waging jihadist genocide against Christians, raping women, and enslaving children. The only way to stop this evil and protect Christians is to feed it militarily. Pinprick airstrikes and sending a handful of soldiers into Syria and Iraq won't work. It's already failed. It's time for America to take the lead. It's time for America to protect Christians from genocide. It's time for America to defeat ISIS. Sign on to our new petition today. Destroy ISIS, protect Christians. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. If you're just joining us, we had a big win. And this is something we've been talking about for. I'm going to go back to, I want to play this bite again of me. I don't usually play myself on a bite, but I'm going to play myself on a bite. This was in, when was this? It was 2015. December of 2015. December of 2015, so over two years ago. Here's what I said about the president continuing to use the phrase ISIL. You got to stop using the term ISIL. That to me is defining your enemy by their aspirations. And that is always a mistake. Today, actually last week, but it was released today, the yep. State Dep uh, the Department of Defense, in a memorandum that I'm putting up on the screen, issued this. Naming Convention for the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. It's from Michael Brun, the Executive Secretary for the Secretary of Defense. It was confirmed by Captain Jeff Davis, the press, uh, the Pentagon spokesperson, consistent with National Security Presidential Memorandum 3 of January 28, 2017, plan to defeat the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, and guidance from the Secretary of Defense. The Department of Defense will use the term Islamic State of Iraq and Syria or ISIS when referring to this threat. In other words, we're not going to define our enemy by their aspirations. Wes uh, Smith, Colonel, United States Army retired, Regent Law, uh, Regent grad, uh, student at uh, the Masters in Counterterrorism and Law at Regent University Law School, but also our senior military analyst. This was a big win. It is. Strategically, rule one in strategic, strategic warfare is that you name very clearly what you're up against. You name your enemy, and that that's, puts them on notice. It also uh, serves to increase the morale and the readiness of your troops as well. well and it's the focus. So instead of these, the Levant terminology, which, which wasn't clear because, again, they weren't in some of those places, they were in others, right. they're two strongholds so far where their leader operates from are in Iraq and Syria. First, it was more in Syria because of Raqqa. Raqqa came under a lot of bombardments, so we believe now that that leadership, is a lot of that is in Iraq. Uh, but they are able to get back and forth uh, as we speak. That yep. attack on Mosul is still dragging on. Um, that, that being said, when you focus in on how to defeat ISIS, that's defeating ISIS. You will then have to defeat the ISIS affiliates, like the ISIS affiliates in, in Libya, yep. like the ISIS affiliates in Northern Sinai, Africa. like the ISIS affiliates in uh, Somalia and in that operate in Nigeria and, and places like Mali. To, that report's supposed to come to the president tomorrow from the generals. And that right. focus is defeating ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Right. That, it's not going to defeat all of radical Islam everywhere you can find it. It's right. about def – and that's what, what Wes was saying, telling, giving our troops a clear message and our strategists a clear message. We're focusing in on Iraq – and Syria, right. let's let's weed them out there, and then we'll move on to their other hotbeds of Islamic terror, but that's where it's being controlled from. That's their base of operation. Uh, let's go ahead and take a phone call here, and we'll take some comments as well. Logan? Uh, let's go to Linda. Thanks for holding for about 22 minutes. Thanks a lot, Linda, from Washington. You're on the air. Hey, Linda. Hi, Jay. I'm a little nervous here, but I just wanted to say I appreciate all you do. Thank you so much Thanks. for really pressing the administration to yeah. call the enemy by the correct name and not by their aspirations. And I agree. It is so important to clarify what, who ISIS is, both to American exactly. people and the military and ISIS. 
and just say God bless you and keep up the good work. Well, you listen, we could, Linda, we appreciate that. But look, it was the I'm, I'm holding the the uh, various. We we had a meeting this morning. We've been naming your enemy, calling him re- radical jihadist. We've been publishing that. We've been saying don't call him ISIL right. for three years. We have I've got one uh, petition with ninety two thousand signatures on it. There was another one that Harry, Harry Hutchison sent me that I think had. What was it, Will, 138,000 signatures on it? So 200,000 signatures total. I mean, you all have spoke out on this issue, and the end result of that is is very, very positive. Very positive. Yeah, and it sets the tone for even the career officers in the military. They are now about being that, yep. told, you don't have a choice here. They have no choice. Yes. They would be defying a Department of Defense directive mm-hmm. from the def- uh, the the uh, Secretary of Defense's office if they, if they don't use the terminology. So what, is that, what does that say to the officers, the line officers, Wes? It's a, again, Wes Smith is a senior military analyst for the ACLJ Colonel, United States Army, retired. It just brings tremendous clarity. And the, the people that I know that serve in uniform, they always resented having to use the term ISIL, and that was well, mandated by the previous administration. You know, Logan said this earlier. I think it's right. It was, And Jordan said too, but Logan, you said, it, was, it would bothered everybody when he used ISIL. Yeah, most people just had to start Googling or looking up what he was talking about because everyone used ISIS. The reason your book is The Rise of ISIS and not The Rise of ISIL is not because you decided necessarily right. exclusively I'm using the term ISIS. It's because everyone used the term ISIS. It just happened to be what we people, I'm sure if you check out the Google analytics of what Google's more, I have a feeling ISIS was about 100 times more or more than uh, ISIL. I might find that data out because it's just true. In the Trump administration, very much has always been about talking to the people. This also goes to where non confusion talk that really hits home. But the Obama uh, administration, remember, they said very, very pretty midway through this battle for the couple years left of his presidency that this would not be over in a couple of years that we were not going they were not going to defeat the islamic state and i think they renamed it in attempt to rebranding that's very important in politics um and they were that they were all very politically focused at every level of of their government and they did not want people to compete uh to keep reminding of the syrian red line remember president obama drew the line in the sand the red line if you cross it it, we're going in you know with troops and guess what the assad regime dumped chemical weapons on its people there's evidence of it and uh the russians started getting involved in the region and we didn't cross the red line we we allowed the assad regime to and we did nothing about it and so they said well let's stop reminding people the islamic state is syria let's come up with a different term so we're fine with iraq uh, because but Iraq, gonna, Iraq, yeah. that's the Bush problem. Right. But we'll, we'll come up with a term that really, unless they're scholars, does anyone know what Levant means? No. You've, no. Got, to, you've got to study right. the region I mean, then you'd to, to understand you'd it. you have to like Google that, too. Okay, what is Levant? Yeah. Right, exactly. All right, so let me say something here. We got a comment from General Dunford, the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs. When was this, Will? Over we, the weekend. This was over the weekend. Here's the change. I mean, I want you to listen to it. This is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. We don't want to bring options to him that solve one problem only to create a second problem. And, and we get tasked to look at that. And, and, you know, what I've said to people is if you would, you know, take Webster's and rewrite it and take the word wicked and say, describe the word wicked, I think you'd have to look at the problem we're dealing with right now with regard to ISIS in the Middle East in terms of the various perspectives that have to be addressed in order to effectively solve that problem. I mean, there you go. Wes, I mean, you're a military man. It, you got your, your 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 chairman of your joint chiefs calling it like like it is, and also being very clear, very, very clear. Yeah, very clear. And we've said for for a long time now here at the ACLJ and on our website that you have to name the enemy. Yep. You cannot defeat an enemy that you cannot even name and, and define. And so General Dunford is providing clear military leadership as his I think this is a big Defense development. Mattis. And I really this, do. Yeah, this is this is symbolic in a way at the Pentagon, but yep. it's much more than symbolism. This is clarity, and I think it puts ISIS on notice, Jay. I think it puts them on notice that yep. we have their number and the gloves are off. I think this is, hey, folks, we're going to take this to the enemy. We're going to beat them. Yes. I mean, this is what this is. This is starting to focus like a laser beam, which is what's been lacking for eight years. I haven't, we, haven't received, we haven't seen the response yet of the left on this because, I mean— what are they? I mean, politically, what are they going to come back and say, Jordan? Uh, yes, let's define them by their aspiration. Yeah, I mean, no, no, or are they going to say this is an unrealistic assessment by the president by calling it ISIS? Yeah, I think they'll say, oh, this is just playing into uh, nationalism and the, okay. the, into the to the to the bottom of America, and that people aren't smart enough to use terminology. The truth is, the president speaks to the American people in ways they're supposed to understand when they start using terms that people have to look up and and that are biblical in nature and yeah, and, uh, and, and, uh, and you have to you have to kind of have, be an expert in some area to know 
when you're talking, again, not amongst yourself as experts, but to generally to, as the leader of the American people, uh, you're, you're probably trying to keep them from something. You're trying to distract them. You're trying to confuse them. And on top of that, I think what President Trump said during the campaign trails, right, too, just kind of made everybody feel a little icky. And so on top of that, everybody was just kind of, uh, yeah. you know, just kind of. What, what is with our president? It was, it, it was bizarre. Muslims, I will say it. It, it was Muslims, always bizarre to me. He's trying to defer and make them feel better about themselves, even well, when it's the guys cutting the heads well, off Americans. Wes, uh, you said this, uh, that also he thought it was going to somehow make us more likable yes. to the Muslim world, more palatable to the Muslim right, world. Right, right. He was trying to be deferential. Yeah, that doesn't work out too well. It's okay it does for not them to work want out. an extreme caliphate is what he's... What that <laughs> go, is. go ahead. Well, yeah. he, he had a belief that, that there were a lot of Muslims that, that would not support the caliphate, that idea... And that that they had sympathies, but we could win them to our side if we respected, you know, the Muslim world. Yep. And uh, to those who love us and who love America, they still will. But to those who hate us, being deferential to them is not going to make them love you anymore. I, to them, it is, it is a sign of weakness. We've got a lot more ahead on this issue of ISIS. I encourage you to go to ACLJ.org to sign that petition to destroy and defeat ISIS. You sign those petitions to get the enemy name right. We've now won that. Now let's take it the next step. Dime to destroy and defeat ISIS. ACLJ.org. That's ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or ACLJ.org. Back with more in a moment. The Islamic State is beheading, crucifying, and slaughtering Christians. ISIS is threatening to terrorize America. It's waging jihadist genocide against Christians, raping women, and enslaving children. The only way to stop this evil and protect Christians is to feed it militarily. Pinprick airstrikes and sending a handful of soldiers into Syria and Iraq won't work. It's already failed. It's time for America to take the lead. It's time for America to protect Christians from genocide. It's time for America to defeat ISIS. Sign on to our new petition today. Destroy ISIS, protect Christians. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org. ISIL no more. It is now ISIS, and now let's eliminate them so that they are gone. That will be the focus uh, of what's going to happen here. So, again, we'll give you some analysis on that uh, as well. We just had our military experts in. We're now going to take your calls. Time for you to get involved in the conversation. Logan, let's go ahead and do that. Right, let's go to Hashim, who's calling in Virginia. Hey. You're on the hi, air, Hashim. Hi. Um, hey, I wanted to say that I am a Muslim. I'm a dedicated Muslim, but I do not support uh, people like ISIS, because they have turned Islam into their God, because they kill people who are not Muslims, when God made all the people in our belief system, whether they're Muslim or not, everyone is given life and nourishment, and God knows the lineages of every people, and these people are really a new Islam, new brand of fascist Islam, yep. that does not represent the Sunnis or the Shias. This is the irony. Uh, the Saudis are against them, and the Iranians are against them, and everyone around the world are against them, and I just wanted to make that point, please. You know, Hashan, I appreciate you calling in. You know, what's interesting to me, and this gets overlooked sometimes, some of the greatest uh, tragedies in this conflict with ISIS have been, of course, they've, they've, they've devastated the Christian communities and the Yazidi community, the religious minority community, but they have gone after Sunnis and Shia alike within in the, within the Islam Islamic world. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you don't agree with their brand of Islam. Go ahead, George. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the most people who are killed by Islamic terror in the world are Muslims. And, uh, and, and that's because if you are um, not ex accepting and following, practicing their 
very specific version of the Islamic interpretation, which we believe also is uh, not just the extreme, but wrong and inaccurate. Um, and you could see that by even their their abuse that they yep. do. I mean, that you can read Bibles, Korans. You could see things that are, again, at more violent times in the world, you know, in the right. early parts of our history. But those kind of conduct was never condoned. It's not right. condoned. Right. And Within- and and yet they they would justify drug use, right. um, uh, running prostitution rings, um, child uh, slavery, child yep. yeah slavery, all these things. Yeah. Um, but we we have allowed, unfortunately, that to go on t- too long to where. Remember, we were talking about in this discussion about the name. And Wes was saying that we were trying to uh, placate. ISA was trying to yep. placate other Muslims, and yep. you hear from Hashim right there. Other Muslims didn't want to be aso- they placated. Yeah, they, they didn't like the aspirational say- aspect of ISIS. That was almost defeating their purpose. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right, let's keep going. A lot of people on hold. If you want to get your voice heard, though, we do have a couple lines open now. 1-800-684-3110. Not usual, but Not we usual, do. Not usual, but we do. A couple lines. Right. 1-800-684-3110. Let's go back. Let's go to Stefan, who's calling on line five in New York. Hi, Stefan. You're on the air. Hi, guys. My question is, now that we have designated as ISIS, Yep. Are we going to refer to the press like CNN and ABC, World News, and all of these World News says we will only address questions with the name ISIS? Well, this will be ISIS. this will be the interesting conflict that comes up. Is and I've been asked about this. What is the media reaction to be? What are groups on the left going to be? How are they going to defend? What are they going to say? Oh no, I'm sorry, we're calling uh, them ISIL still. Interesting. Way back in 2014, Chuck Todd on NBC now is. Meet the Pred, meet the right. press was not at the time. He said, uh, "We at NBC News refer to them as ISIS." And so NBC had already, even that mainstream media world, which we right. had disagreed with their way that they have portrayed the Trump administration. Even they, because they speak to the American people, did not think that using the term ISIL was good for their yep. business of reporting the news because it was confusing and people so, may not click on the headline. So even even they were saying, uh, "This again is not that." Uh, they were saying. We, we use ISIS. I mean, that's so, how, this, so I think a lot of reporters actually still use, they never switched over. Yeah, so here's the thing, Logan. Do you think it was, was it the, because they did not use ISIL, the they, media did. They always right. had to explain yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, they always had to explain it. It was confusing. Again, I think this was something, it was clearly, a, I mean, they did it intentionally for yeah. the reasons that we've all stated, but I think switching it back has been a, a huge deal, and it should be a huge deal, just because of the way uh, perception has changed. Yeah. You could read an article in the New York Times quoting the president or an official from the Obama administration using ISIL. They'd have to spend three sentences defining what that is because their readers usually see ISIS unless it was an yep. administration official. And th- so th- that's what the Obama administration wanted every time is okay, and you move on. Yeah. They didn't want you focusing on their failure. Part in of Syria. the Obama legacy is that ISIS lived on throughout and the Obama presidency, controlled large swaths of Syria. All right, let's go ahead and take the rest of these calls. All right, continuing on, George in California, you're up. Hey, George, go ahead. Hi. Uh, Yes, I I noted that, that the Obama administration always tried to put out uh, the the name ISIL, uh, you know, the Levant, and that uh, assumes the destruction of Israel. Correct. And this caliphate going all the way to the Mediterranean Ocean. I mean, well, I'm going to put the map app up on the screen for our TV and radio audience because, I mean, look, this is... There it is. And we even included what's called, you know, by what the world calls Palestine. It's not a technical state. But they want it in that area, too. They want it where the Palestinian Authority is operating under their control because they're not radical enough for them. So, yes, you're absolutely correct. The fact of the matter is we push back on this very, very aggressively early on. I mean, I started talking about this in 2015, that this was a mistake. Don't do this. There's no reason to do this. This is a mistake. Our book is Rise of ISIS. I wasn't going to define our book title by their aspirations. But look, this is a major bold move by the administration. I think it's very positive. I'm very glad that General Mad Dog Mattis had this come out this way. And I'm glad that the president put this in in, in play here. When it comes to our national security, we know the president uh, tomorrow will be receiving various options on how to defeat and destroy the Islamic State from our security experts in our government. Uh, he will. He could choose one of those options. He could put together a couple of them. He could say, go back to the drawing board. When I sat down with the vicar of Baghdad, who has experienced the treachery of ISIS, Canon Andrew White. I want to talk about ISIS because you were there. Um, you know, I've looked at it legally. I've looked at it politically. I've written about it. We've studied it. Um, we... we our view is they have to be crushed. There's no negotiations with them. This is, not a, uh, this is not where you can have any kind of dialogue. This is not even the Iranians. This is a whole different element of evil. You've been there. You've seen it firsthand. 
what do you do with them? I've tried. And you're a guy that does reconciliation. I mean, that's your ministry. I've tried. It can't work. Why? Why? Because they feel they have lost so much and they're going to make the others lose as much as they've lost. Yet they're attracting educated people. They're attracting people that had businesses. They're attracting uh, young people that had college degrees from England, from the United States, from Canada. This is, it's an interesting sociological dynamic. They're attracting, they treat women horribly, but yet they're attracting women. There's a case right now where uh, three young girls from Britain have gone through Turkey to get to, uh, to get to Iraq and Syria to join up with ISIS and to go through that. And these were modern Muslim younger women. But stupid. Well, stupid and they may not come and out alive. And they want to what is once it? again demonstrate the power of Islam. When I talked with Andrew White, I talked about a professor I had at the University of Oxford in a program I participated in several years ago at Exeter College where we studied the issue of radicalization with terrorism. It was a, a phenomenal program. I was thrilled to study at, at Oxford. But let me tell you this, folks, and I, I want to be very clear here. I, I, it was the professor who said to me, we've got to crush them. And I believe that is exactly right. So now we've named the enemy, and that's good. Now the next step is crush that enemy, ISIS, once and for all. ACLJ.org to sign on to that petition to do just that. That's ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. Add your voice to hundreds of thousands. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. We'll talk to you next week. The Islamic State is beheading, crucifying, and slaughtering Christians. ISIS is threatening to terrorize America. It's waging jihadist genocide against Christians, raping women, and enslaving children. The only way to stop this evil and protect Christians is to feed it militarily. Pinprick airstrikes and sending a handful of soldiers into Syria and Iraq won't work. It's already failed. It's time for America to take the lead. It's time for America to protect Christians from genocide. It's time for America to defeat ISIS. Sign on to our new petition today. Destroy ISIS, protect Christians. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org.